few gun laws out there. But what we're not doing is we're not prosecuting still violent okay. felons with guns, drug dealers with guns, gang members with okay. guns, and that's what we're talking about. Let's go to the tricky. So that's strategy number one. Law enforcement be damned, we need more gun laws. Strategy number two, gun owners, you all have nothing to fear. Your rights are safe. Go to sleep. Watch Chris, Chris Matthews spin this fairy tale. Doesn't that take away the fearfulness of a lot of NRA members and other people in this country that the black helicopters are coming to take away their guns? Doesn't that take away that fear factor? This is still going to be a fight, Chris. You still think yeah, the black think. helicopters are coming? I, I, I'll tell you what. No, really. I'm, he, he raised a good they point. They were for the collective rights. They were for the but ban. They lost on that. One. But they're still in favor of putting all kinds of obstacles in the way of the law to buy people. Do you agree that the federal government is not now coming to take away people's guns? I think we still got a fight on our hand. I mean, take New York City, okay? The celebrities, the rich, the famous, they get their permits under all these licensing and permit system. The average guy in the Queens, in Queens, when he tries to do it, they tell him, hey, you're flat out of luck. Now, I think that the law is capricious. This Supreme Court case... I will think you're going to win that argument. I, I, I think we are, I think too. I don't think there's a fear right now. It looks to me like you've got a 5-4 court right now, and if the Republicans win again, you may have a 6-3 court, a 7-2 court, yeah. which is very pro-Second Amendment. It looks to me like your lobby has been very effective and you should do a victory lap now and if the smart lobbyist never gives up ever Wayne Lapierre one of the best so message number two is gun owners drop your guard you have nothing to fear become apathetic don't worry but strategy number three is everyone else hey you have everything to fear from bazookas to burp guns here they come watch this now, right. reasonable believe, restrictions. You don't believe that all gun laws are, wrong, are unconstitutional, do you? We've always supported behavioral restrictions, felons with guns, drug dealers with guns, violent gang well, can you walk down street, there? Can you walk down Broadway with a bazooka? Do you think that's a right to bear yeah, arms? Know, bazookas aren't covered okay. by the Second Amendment. That's How just about a Tommy scary. gun? I mean, Should you be allowed to walk down Broadway with a Tommy gun? They've been heavily I'm restricted since the 30s, what do you Chris. Think? I mean, you're, you're trying what do you, to scare I'm, people. I'm just asking I mean, you, what's your position? This is an individual right hey, to own firearms. What's your firearms? position as the NRA this, about the right to bear arms? What is the limit on it? Traditional type firearms that American public is always rifles, shotguns, handguns. Those are what were co was covered under this case today. So all 50 caliber is is another caliber. It's no different. Semi-automatics are quintessential firearms, okay. just like handguns okay. owned by citizens all over this country. Dip, 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 okay, but you're dip, talking dip, about wrong. fully automatic. No, I know. Dip, 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 dip is, is semi-automatic. You have to yeah, pull, pull the trigger That's each right. time. I'm not talking about a burp yeah. gun. It's about okay. as mainstream right. a firearm as you can you get. You get so fiery about this. You won today. Hey, hey, what? No, I'm asking. They're still going to try to put all kinds of restrictions in okay. the place of the honest citizen. We're going to fight this okay, out. Well, let me give, let me give you right here. You know, but you can see from that short, those short clips, that's how it works. The Supreme Court ruling to these folks on the other side means nothing. It means new laws against good guys, not bad guys. Gun owners, hey, go to sleep. Get apathetic. Don't sign up in NRA. Don't write your congressman. Go to sleep. And anti-gunners, wake up. Now's the time. We're going to make a move. That's what we're going to be facing. You know, my time is up now. But if you leave here, I hope you leave here. If you remember nothing else, let it be this. There was a time. And I was there when the competitive shooter didn't care about the deer hunter, who never thought about the street cop, who never met the upland bird hunter, who was suspicious of the handgun owner, who wouldn't defend the semi-auto varmint rifle owned by the rancher, who never met a range owner, who didn't care about the Iwo Jima vet whose pistol collection fills the home of his lonely widow, who never attended a gun show, and who thought Trap and Skeet were a comedy team. None of them had anything in common but a firearm. Then came gun bans and waiting periods and ammo taxes and closed hunting lands and roads and media lies about a so-called assault weapons. And that's when they decided they belonged together. And the modern NRA was born. And they're all stronger for it. I invite every one of you out there today and listening over the television to join NRA today because we must be even stronger to survive that perfect storm that now threatens to blow our freedoms away.
That's why I call on you to go out and reach out to every freedom freeloader who agrees but who doesn't act, who believes in the right but doesn't fight for the right, and get them to join in freedom's name. Tell them the truth. It doesn't matter whether they're shooters or whether they're hunters or even whether they own a gun. No matter who they are, if they believe in the Second Amendment to our Constitution, if they believe in the promise and providence of this nation, if they believe in freedom, they need to join this movement. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but the fact is we need the choir to be a whole lot bigger. And we need every gun owner and every freedom Second Amendment supporter in America in that choir. Uniting for freedom when faced with its destruction is an American tradition that goes back to the very beginning. It began as a long, loud shouting match on the eve of our nation's birth. The Boston merchants, they didn't care about Carolina farmers. Pennsylvania Quakers, they wanted no part of Virginia slave owners. Our state doesn't need to be a united state. Southern gentry hated traders and trappers who ate with their hands. Tobacco versus timber. Federalists versus isolationists. English and Scots versus Irish and Germans. We don't belong. Why not a loose confederation of states? Our founding fathers were anything but united. All had good reasons why they didn't belong and why they should remain separate. But they faced the world's mightiest army and navy and a bloody flood of redcoats coming to crush them under the boot of King George. And that's when 70-year-old Benjamin Franklin lifted his quill pen to sign the Declaration of Independence and said, Gentlemen, we must hang together or we shall assuredly hang separately. If our founding fathers, if our founding fathers hadn't been joiners, freedom would have been lost to the world forever. We too today as we sit here in this room, face a mighty army. Let's face it, let's fight it, and forevermore, let us all hang together as Americans for our freedoms that have made our country, the USA, the greatest country in all of mankind. Thank you very much. And let's fight for that freedom. Thank you.